right, what is going on guys? If you haven't watched yesterday's video, let me catch you up to speed a little bit. We're over here at Roberto's shop. We're gonna be doing a lot of things together in the future and right now. We're gonna be working on the 240 today. We're gonna be taking my S15 DT completely apart and getting that thing ready to go to the machine shop. All morning, been hanging out with Nick from Clean Culture. We got a lot of exciting things to come. You guys are gonna be finding that out in a couple days, but let's go over, talk to Roberto because we got a lot to explain. And this year, the goal is to stop blowing things up every single car that I've built usually just breaks and stuff in 2023 we're really trying to step away from that and Roberto is here to help me All right guys, so you can see we have a ton of parts here. We got the HKS turbo kit on and stuff. We're just mocking everything up. We got pistons, rods, you name it, bunch of Haltech stuff. I'm gonna give Roberto the mic real quick and he's just gonna kind of talk about how we're gonna make this thing actually ruddy proof because when we say I'm gonna try to blow this thing up, that's literally our goal is for me to try to break this and for Roberto to save it. So what you got? Okay, so I guess I'll give a, a quick explanation of ruddy proof. So the idea behind it is step one is we're upgrading hardware. Hardware being the rotating assembly rods, pistons, that kind of stuff. Well, this guy's ruining it. He's ruined everything. <laughs> he just ruined everything. <laughs> Big ruin it, guys. I'm in the zone. I'm like saying stuff. You yeah, know? then he blares that. Blares that. that this guy. You know, don't even edit that out. <laughs> Let people know what he did. Come on, Joe. What are you doing? <laughs> Back to what I was saying. Yeah, so ready proof. Step one, hardware. Step two is the important part, though. Something I've never done. Yeah, and this is where everyone... Up. You can we can curse on your channel. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. mute them sometimes. Sometimes we don't. But do what you want. Okay, chicken. All right. The main thing is that everyone ignores is you can put the best pistons in the world in. You can put the best rods, the best bearings. None of that matters if you have no oil pressure, right? You can put loaded pistons, all those crazy stuff. None of that matters if you're running the engine too lean. None mm -hmm. of that matters if you have an injector going bad. None of that matters if you know things aren't working properly. Uh, so the way that we take care of that is we add redundancy, and that's done via tuning. So in this case, we're using the Haltech. You see, we're gonna lose, use a 1500, but we, I just had this one to, to kind of show. Yeah. Um, but either way, we're gonna use the tuning strategies available to us using the Haltech package to add redundancy, right? So we're gonna have things like EGTs. We're gonna have, we're gonna monitor each cylinder temperature. But the reason we'll do that is so that if, let's say we have an injector that's going bad, we have some misfire, something weird that's going on, I can look at that data and determine what's going on without having to guess. That gives us the ability to assess issues right away, if there is one. And if we do have an issue or a failure, we can see what happened, right? We can go back and look at the data and be like, oh, cylinder three was super hot. That's the one we had an issue with. You know, same thing goes for other aspects of the engine. So in this case, this is our oil pressure and temperature sensor. So we're going to monitor oil pressure and oil temperature at all times. Uh, temperature is really important because hot oil does not do a good job of lubricating, right? And especially in a car like this with a drift application where you're just gonna be sitting there hitting red line, doing all this stuff, we need to make sure that the oil temperature and pressure stay within a certain parameter that's gonna keep the engine healthy and alive. The second either of those things leaves that parameter that's preset in the ECU, two things will happen. One, we're gonna get a check engine light. And then two, we're gonna get some sort of engine protection. Uh, we're gonna toggle that on a switch because the last thing you need is for this thing to cut you off while you're on a bank, you know, going 60, 70 miles an hour. That's, that's bad news. Uh, but if you're just, you know, putt-putt on the road, beating on it, you're a skid pad, there's nothing for you to heat, hit, you turn on the engine protection, and something goes wrong, ECU stops. If you're, where's the shirt where you're tanning with Jimmy? You know, in that scenario, or wherever that is, in that scenario, you shut it off. Yeah. But if something goes wrong, at least this told you what happened. Exactly. Hey, you had low oil pressure. Hey, the cylinder got hot. Hey, something happened, right? So you, you're not, if you do have a failure, you're not just going, right? You actually know what's, what, what's going on inside. And I do a lot of... And, and when I say rudder proof, it doesn't mean that nothing can go wrong. Obviously, things can go wrong. Yeah. But if something goes wrong and we either stop it before it can get catastrophic, hmm. right? Or we at least know exactly what happened and we can adapt and then do something about it in the future. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. Yeah, you know, no, for sure. Once you have the data, you can, you know, you can do whatever. You yeah. Want. You, you can just kind of fix everything. If you're monitoring everything, I mean, right. it's just going to throw a check engine light, you'll know. And it just makes life easier for you or whoever to diagnose everything. Like, you just go on the computer everything is there right in your face right and it also allows us to remote in so you could have an issue in connecticut or in texas or wherever mm -hmm. you are and with all this information at hand it's just a matter of promoting in checking it out you know you tell me hey the car is breaking up instead of guessing and throwing stuff at it i can go in there and be like oh dude you're losing fuel pressure at 4,000 rpm yeah 
go no, check your sick. filter, check your pump, check whatever. Yep. You know, that's the kind of stuff that keeps the cars alive yeah. and on the track. And this is actually awesome for me because you guys saw a few videos ago, I went to go take my GTR out. It's really lean every time I go to hit boost, everyone in the comments is blowing me up like, yo, you gotta clean your injectors, you gotta change your fuel filter. I've been here like the past week and on the sidelines, Will's been at the shop, he took the injectors out, he sent them more fab, shout out to you, Justin. He's changed the fuel filter, he did all of that and we're still running into the problem. If we had that fuel pressure sensor linked to the Hall Tech, um, Roberto could have just scanned in, he's like, hey buddy, you got good fuel pressure, you got that, it's not your injectors or it's not your fuel filter. Right. And he, I, I could have saved Will's time, I could have saved me money, and all of that, so well, it's run redundancy, like you said. Right. In that scenario, you'd have your EGTs monitoring every single cylinder, right? Yep. So chances are, if you had like a global fueling issue, mm -hmm. it would affect every cylinder evenly. If you had one injector or two injectors that were off, it would affect each those individual cylinders. EGTs would tell you that. Yeah. You'd have one or two cylinders that would weigh the hell off, right? And then, yeah, with the fuel pressure sensor, you can you can actually see what's happening. Exactly. If we if we go and we monitor it, and you're breaking up, and your EGTs are perfect, and your fuel pressure is perfect, guess what isn't the problem? Fat. The fuel. Yeah. <laughs> right. So now you can ignore all that and go to what really could be the problem, which could who knows, you know, spark plugs, whatever, you know, whatever it may be at that point. But that's the idea behind this. It's just knowing everything, so we don't have to guess, and everything is just something's wrong. Let's fix it. And if something wrong happened, it didn't break us. It just gave us a check yeah. engine light. Which, that's the goal. We, we want to see a check engine light because at the end of the day, sure, it's a slight inconvenience, but it's going to save you thousands of dollars down the line because you know that problem and you can fix it before anything happens. Exactly. You know, and this is, if you, if you look around you, yeah. you know, this, this is... Yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're doing this to all cars. Right. Yeah, like, this is... This is the new new right here. EGTs, yeah. that, all of that. And that engine's seen over 1,100 horsepower multiple times. You know, yep. uh, it's we've never had a catastrophic failure because every time it's ever something has failed because things they fail like at mm -hmm. that power level. Things fail. We've always knew about it way before. Yeah, we've had an oil pump fail on it. But nothing happened. The computer just shut us down. Exactly. Uh, we the last time around we lifted the head and uh, we ended up uh, uh, burning out the head gasket. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. You know what? You know why? Yeah, the coolant coolant, there's a coolant pressure sensor. <laughs> coolant pressure went up. The ECU went, yeah, That's... and we just put put it here, assessed the damage, and here we are. You know, I didn't even know there was a coolant pressure sensor. That's pretty crazy. But Roberto over here, he's already started to like mark out for the EGTs and stuff. Um, our goal today is to strip this thing off or strip this thing, get strip this thing it off. Okay. Strip it off. Yeah, right. we're gonna strip off today. That's what okay. we're gonna do. And um, yeah, just get this thing ready for the machine shop and stuff. I'm leaving. I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm going to New Zealand. Um, for the month of February. I got a lot of cool things planned with Calvin. You guys know my boy Calvin. He was here on Drift Week. He actually helped me like rebuild my entire 240. And without him, I wouldn't have been able to be doing what I was doing on Drift Week and stuff. And he was just, we, we became really good friends. And he gave me an awesome opportunity to come to New Zealand and do some cool things with him. And we've been coordinating this for like the past like two months and everything is in line. And I can't wait to share that with you guys. But while I'm there, this is gonna be at the machine shop and stuff. I get back late. February and hopefully the machine shop has this done and we're assembling it while I'm gone We'll be taking the engine out of my 240 Roberto's gonna like mark all of the spots where we can just kind of weld fill in make the bay nice We'll send it over Chris over at Mako. He's gonna paint the bay come back and then um Early March hopefully as long as everything goes right this thing is gonna be making good power reliable all sensors Let's try to break it that's my favorite, that's my most exciting part is let's try to break this f***ing thing. Because I love being vicious. Well, you and pretty much all of my customers. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's where a lot of this came from was just not wanting to have issues anymore and just being able to give someone the keys and just know that no matter what they do, other than drain the oil and start it, yeah. <laughs> you know, there just isn't going to be, you know, it, it's going to be a check engine light, not a hole in the block, not a melted piston, not, you Exactly. Know. I mean, just this month we've had two cars that came back both big, super expensive builds. One had a bad fuel pump. Yep. And the ECU caught it long before it could do any damage. Yep. Uh, and the other one had, uh, what's it called, an oil slosh issue. Yeah. You know? At the end of the day, their cars, things break, but right. if you can catch it before something bad happens, that's good. Sorry, this clip was long. We just really want to explain what's going down. Just be transparent about the whole thing and kind of explain to you the build. So with that being said, we're going to start tearing this thing down.
valve no, train, blood everywhere. We've already what? taken one person to the hospital this week. We're going to have one second one. I've only been to the hospital once from cars, and it's just because I got something stuck in my head. Yeah, the famous last word. Oh. Hey, at least I wasn't more because it caught my whole lip open. Hey, Rudy, remember that time we had that whole Rudy proof thing, but it failed because I literally killed myself? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, well, the SR, she's officially all torn apart. Everything is good to go. I mean, everything kind of checked out. Yeah, yeah this, honestly, this engine was probably a good candidate to just start up and play yeah. with. I mean, crank, spin, super smooth. Oh, I didn't even feel that. Ooh, nice. It says we remain sealing it, so there's a little friction on it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy with that. So um, we're going to be dropping this off on Monday. I already got the appointment to just send her off. And hopefully, I mean, this, everything goes right, which, I mean. Yeah, this goes. Sometimes machine shops, like, oh, two weeks and two months later, you know, you kind of have your stuff. But at this point, it's kind of in their hands. While I'm gone, Joe's going to be coming to be documenting everything. Um, we're all going to coordinate when we're going to pull the engine out of the 240. I'm going to coordinate with Chris so we can send, we can tow that um, to Orlando and he can actually get that bay sprayed. And by the time I get back, everything will just be ready. This will be fully assembled and we can drop this thing in, make our good horsepower with the HKS turbo kit and we'll try to blow it up. Try. Ruddy proof. Ruddy proof. Merch coming soon. I think Ruddy proof is a fire oh, merch it's a plug. Don't oh. worry. I mean, we're going to make sure, we're going to put Ruddy proof to the test and when we prove that it works, that's when the merch drop comes. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, well, we're officially back home in Connecticut. We're gonna be gearing up to be going to New Zealand. I can't lie, it feels super weird going from 80 degrees to it's currently 12. Last night, it was literally negative seven, so I'm pretty excited that we're leaving the country and everything, but we're gonna end the video here, guys. I'm super stoked that we're gonna be working with Roberto and his team on building the 240. So you guys saw we have everything apart and stuff, and tomorrow that thing is getting dropped off at the machine shop. Don't forget, we got new junk keychains with the 10 mil. Honestly, you guys, have sold a ton of them already and I'm super stoked about that. And I do wanna say, junk banners. If you want the OG junk banner, they're about to be gone. So if you want one of those, get on that. But other than that, hopefully you guys have a good rest of your day and I'm gonna go back inside because I can't feel my body and I'm freezing. See ya.